Hello, I am Madeline James, and today is going to be another Preptober world building style video. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, I am going to be starting a brand new novel for uh, NaNoWriMo, which I actually technically already started the first scene because I worked on it during the Worldwide Write-A-Thon, which is still technically going on. Um, but I've also been working on my world building um, Bible, which is right here, is glorious, is many things. And one of the types of items that I still need to expand on is settings. And this is something that's really, really important to me because I'm not just using a sort of default kind of setting. Like I really need to set it up in a way where it makes sense. The world that my story is set in was sort of Renaissance era, but very Northern. It's not in any of those like more mainstream areas. So I've had to do a lot more research on the type of architecture and structures and adjust it for the type of magic in my world. And there is also a sort of, I keep using the word apocalypse, but it doesn't actually feel like the right word. But basically there's a ton of like beasts that invaded about 15 years ago and decimated the population and they've all retreated into these like settlements um, that are protected. And so that has obviously had a big impact on what the areas they live in are like because they have to be very defendable um, and it has to do with the magic and, and everything. So it's complicated, right? And I want to make sure that all of my choices are very intentional because it's a lot to think about. So I can't really just come up with it on the fly. So I have already gone through and done my sort of major settings and I will give you a quick like, I'll show those to you, but Today, my goal is going to be world building out the other settings that I kind of am going to need for my outline. There was two big ones, which was sort of the regional map, which I've done, the main characters, um, like village post, that's done, and then the sort of um, headquarters where the gang that she infiltrates is. So I have those major settings already figured out. But then, let me find my notebook. Where's my to-do list? So I have a to-do list from outlining, which I haven't, you know, I still have a decent number of things to do. But some of the settings that I'm going to need is, let's see, I need to build out a little like village market. So that's gonna be number one, which I can actually number these. A water village, a earth mine, and earth mine. And let's see, there's going to be two other places. There's going to be the local leaders headquarters, I guess. And then a common gang leader meeting space. So basically if they're going to meet up with a bunch of those um, other gang leaders, where would they go? I think that's all the settings that I need to figure out and then I'll have all of them done that are come up in book one. So I'm going to put my list to the side. I'm going to show you kind of what I already have a little bit. Um, I might add a slight blur to this if I have too many like details written in. I'm not really like, if you want to copy the layout of my village, like don't do it, but like would anyone actually know kind of thing. So I'm not too, too worried about it, but so let's get going. This is my world building Bible. If you haven't seen any of my other, I guess, videos about this, um, I'll link all my Preptober stuff below. I think I have a playlist, but let's see. So the general area, I think I have all under the world section. Let's see. I have information on weather, flora, medicinal plants. No, this is not where it is. Under Istria, let's see. This is my sort of regional map. So essentially most of this is taking place at the base or sort of at the base of a mountain. They're still in the highlands and sort of like a mountain valley region. Um, but I have some of the major ridges kind of shown on my map, but there's also a lot of, um, like none of this land is actually flat. It's all slowly going down in elevation. But the one main setting is here, which is the guardian post that the main character lives in. And then the fort that is here is sort of where the gang is. So these are two settings I need. I need to figure out some of the water villages um, and some of the earth, the earth mine. And I think I need, 
the general lieutenant's base, and I think there's another place further, um, but this regional map sort of let me make it to scale. So I have, um, let me see if I actually have it here. So when I do my world building, if you've seen any of my world building stuff, I go way extra. Um, okay, so this is sort of my land masses on an actual globe with latitudinal and longitudinal lines on it. So my world is set basically right here and specifically basically right in this tiny spot right there. So what I did is I calculated out the exact placements of these latitudinal and longitudinal lines and I put them on, let's see if I have it in here. I don't know, none of these are really done yet, but I put it on basically a map like this where I drew the lines out and then using math of basically how much distance is between those different lines, um, I figured out, you know, what my distance scale was. Essentially, if you are, say, 30 degrees north versus 45 degrees north, that distance from one line to one line is going to be slightly different. So I basically, this isn't really right here where the story takes place, isn't really that big of an area. So I kind of figured out roughly what um, latitude that was and then used that to calculate how far of distance it was longitudinally. And then I figured out basically my scale and this regional map was drawn to scale. So I was able to sort of use the grid, which you'll see right here. This is sort of 50 miles how far everything is from each other. So then I created a traveling section here, which I don't know if you can sort of see this, but it essentially has um, the amount of travel time it would take from one distance to another. And traveling distances are complicated because it depends who's traveling, how you're traveling, and what the land is like. So I also determined some of these locations based off what I wanted the travel time to be in world. So like I really wanted the post and the fort to be transversible, like to be able to be traveled reasonably within a single day if someone were to like absolutely push it and be traveling it by themselves. So that was sort of what I was aiming for. Um, and so based off, you know, there being the rivers and whether or not they could find stable ground, um, hiking is sort of a sort of max hiking speed is maybe 20 or 30 miles a day, which this I think is about 40 miles. So if you were to reason that you had a horse, which can go 50 to 100 miles per day max, um, assuming that that horse is actually trained for long distances and endurance, which most horses aren't unless like that's what they're used for. Like they are pack horse travel horses. Um, so I was able to sort of figure out that like, okay, you know, 40 miles is the right distance. I don't want them to be, be like neighbors, but I needed to be close enough that I could have short amounts of time passing between going from one to the other. So I sort of use that as my scale to figure everything out and then I have an idea of what the time travel distances are so I can sort of keep that in mind while I'm outlining how long it would actually take to get from point A to point B and all of that. So that is my regional. Oh my gosh, I keep saying regional instead of regional. This is my regional map. All right, this is the map of the post that the Guardian family essentially lives in. So if you've seen pictures of glaciated regions, whatever, um, there's something called a hanging valley, which is essentially if you had a normal mountain and valley region where you have lots of valleys, mountains, valley, mountain, and then large glaciers went through it somewhat perpendicularly and carved out deeper valleys right through them, you get this sort of hanging valley sort of landscape where there's not quite a cliff, but like a very steep um, edge to these like U-shaped glaciated um, valleys. And so you tend to get um, waterfalls and it's very not transversible. So it made sense for there to be small villages in these sorts of areas as stopping travel points when people in the world before went on like pilgrimages or something. So essentially my inspiration for this post was it used to be a very small village that was sort of a stopping point along a pilgrimage path. So they sort of took this and turned it into a, um, I guess a barrier post where they're sort of keeping the beasts out and keeping everything further up into the valley and in the higher up mesas safe. So I added 
a uh, wall here and a gatehouse. I have um, a watchtower, like a new watchtower, one of the watchtowers I'm having being older. Um, and they destroyed the old path up to the village because they don't want it transverse, um, easily transversed, traversed. They don't want it easily traversed now, but they used to. And they have some side, more difficult paths up now. Um, and then I just kind of have sort of a layout. I have inspirational pictures too for what these look like, but these houses are sort of inspired by, I hear what they're called, but they're sort of like, they're just very small um, wooden houses, village type houses. And then I constructed a sort of more modern style main house that they would have built for the whole Guardian family once they established it. So it sort of has some um, architectural inspiration from the layouts of some of the bigger towns and cities where they're from. So these houses would all have been original to the village and this would have all been um, added afterwards. And so that's sort of <laughs> how I put this one together and what my inspiration was. I did look at some maps of villages and found some inspirational pictures to get an idea of what layout I sort of wanted, but this is the Novek Post. So the other big place that I have, which let's see. Yes, okay. This is the uh, Mura River Fort, which is essentially where the gang has taken up post. And they did not need to be in quite as defensible as a location because um, they have a type of magic that lets them fight the beasts more. So they're able to sort of make do out in the open. It's an urban area. It's an actual town, right? So there's going to be a sort of abandoned town around this, as you would expect in a city. But then the actual fort itself is sort of a... I don't remember what this is called, but there's a style for this style of fortress. And technically this style is more similar to stone-built fortresses, but due to the magic um, and what they're able to do, it's actually, um, they did it in wood. So it's taking a stone-style fortress due to the way that they can work with wood in this world, and, you know, this whole thing would be like a wooden, wooden walls, wooden gatehouses and towers and all that. And then I found essentially what a sort of city map would look like within one of these, um, within the actual major city walls, right? Because if this was defensible, you would expect some smaller portion of the city to be in here and it to basically, they would want it to be able to withstand a siege. They would want it to be able to house most of the people in the town, but not long term, right? So like most of the people would actually live outside, but if they were under attack could come inside, right? So... I have portions of this as it would have been um, 15 years ago before their apocalyptic event. So this sort of area of the city, this sort of area of the city is all sort of as it would have used to be. Maybe some of this too. So they have some like bigger houses. They have a barracks. Um, and these barracks are actually styled off of real ones that I found. Um, a layout. Oh gosh, I wonder if I can find where I got this from. I don't remember, but this layout right here is actually the layout of a real um, fort, like a small fort barracks, and I figured this would be sort of like a fallback location if the actual fort itself got um, infiltrated, they could fall back to the barracks as a last sort of fighting place. So that's sort of how I have that set up, and I have small maps of the interiors of the buildings in here that would be relevant. But essentially, they ripped apart parts of this um, parts of this fort. So over here and down here and up here, and basically pulled all the buildings apart and turned it into farming area, um, land for animals, and a few other things. Because again, it's not actually safe for them to do those types of things outside the walls anymore. So they had to convert the fort to be able to use it for those things. And this was a lot of fun to put together. And I do have some inspo pictures for this too, mainly of what this um, fortress would have looked like, what the walls and the towers would be, which I think do I have, yeah. So these are some of my more close-up maps. So I have, this is what a typical wooden watchtower would have looked like. The style is gonna be slightly different because it's again, that stone structure instead of, or that the inspiration is more of a stone tower structure than a wooden one, but I'm still gonna kind of use this as inspiration. Um, these are the sort of barracks layouts. 
um, what some of the rooms would have looked like. This is the layout of the estate. And I used um, actual floor plans of historic buildings as inspiration for this and then adjusted it for what the world would be like in that time, if that makes sense. So those are the most in-depth um, settings that I have developed. And I have mood boards for all of them. I have pictures for inspiration so that I can sort of imagine what these places would have looked like. And essentially, these are the main two settings in my book. I have a few smaller ones, which I can show you the ones that I've done already, and then we'll start on some new ones. All right, so this one was actually really quick, and the main character is only going to go here um, for a very short period of time, but essentially, this is a settlement that is hiding from the beasts inside the mines of a mountain, which they have expanded to basically house a whole civilization. Um, so I have a bunch of notes for how this would have been constructed based on their magic and yada, yada, yada. But essentially, there is this little path that they can use to go in that is narrow and basically involves diving down into a pool of water and then back up into the main entrance. So that is um, the only way to get in from the ground, which is not accessible by the beast. So that's how they get in. And then they have areas where they've sort of built markets and shops along ridges of giant caves that they've um, built out. Um, large arenas and gathering halls, homes and dormitories. They have little um, outcrop sort of terraces mined out to have high yield farms. Um, and then they have uh, the temples down below and everything. So that's sort of this uh, setting. And I really only need like a very small bit of this for the story. So you can tell it's not that detailed. I don't have like the exact layout further in doesn't really matter. I just sort of have the rough idea. Like you can sort of, you can get the gist enough to write a couple scenes here from this. So then the next one I just set up is again, very minimal. And I might expand on this more when I actually get to this part of the story. But essentially the water villages are in little like treehouse villages. So I sort of have like an example of what the setup might be like. Um, they would have these little easy uh, to pull up ropes up into the structures up above of connecting the ropes, which would be set up in a way where they can sort of tear away. So if a tree was knocked over, the rope would pull off to not impact the structural integrity of the other platforms and buildings. Um, and then I have these this idea of these little multi-story homes where the bottom layer would sort of be like your porch because it's a pass-through, right? Like the um, square footage of a single layer is not gonna be that big because these are around trees, right? So the bottom layer is like your porch where people would be passing through as they're sort of going through the village. And then the upper, um, sorry, the upper stories, which there wouldn't be a lot of them, but you know, if you have like two, maybe three stories, that would be your living space. It would all be very small. These people would have ground farms and everything because their magic um, sort of lets them know when they need to hide from beasts so they kind of know they're coming so they basically just need all of their stuff and homes to actually be out of reach but to be able to then access the ground for you know farms and gardens and all of that sort of thing when my main character goes here she's not really going to go more than just like into a couple houses like it's going to be a very short trip so I didn't feel the need to actually do a full village layout because she's not going to be seeing that much of it and honestly with a village like this you're not going to be able to see much of it at one time anyway like if you come up here you're maybe going to be able to see just the area that's around you but you won't be able to see that far especially with foli foliage and the leaves and everything and this is taking place in summer so those leaves would actually be there um okay so the first one that I'm going to work on right now, and I'm going to sort of talk you through my process. I don't really know exactly what I'm doing yet, so we're going to kind of talk through this. But I am essentially going to be working on the market for this sort of post. And typically, you know, if you think about a market from this kind of time, it wouldn't really be in a village this small, right? Like, if you remember the map, there's like... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I have maybe like 12 houses on here, which there would have been probably a little bit more than that, like further in. But, you know, even if there's like 20 houses, 30 houses, you're talking at under 100 people. There probably wouldn't be a um, concrete, permanent market structure. However, the way this um, post works is they get a lot of their supplies from the sort of settlement that they're protecting. 
So there's, I'm not sure necessarily if it'll be rationed, but there's probably a portion of things that people can just get once a week or, you know, sort of like rations or some things that people can buy with their excess money um, that they can sort of choose to get. So let me just write that down as a note, um, like once or twice a week. It would probably need to be something that was at least partially set up so it wouldn't be permanent. So maybe mostly temporary. And part of the reason for this is I think that probably during the winter, they might not have had it outdoors. They might would might have had it inside the main house, but just, I guess, a little bit smaller and more limited. There probably wouldn't be quite as much trade going on in the winter because the winters would be very severe. So people would be kind of stocking up during the winter. So mostly temporary in summer, winter, market, smaller and indoors. And then it would make sense for it to be near the main house because that's probably where most of the stuff would be brought and stored that's not sort of sold, if that makes sense. So if I look back at my village map, I sort of have this more open square right here, which is if you take the main gatehouse, which they wouldn't really be using very often, um, the supplies would be coming from further up into the valley and up into the mesa. So I'm sort of thinking it would make sense for them to bring it all the way down to the main house and then sort of maybe this courtyard here is a little bit bigger, you know, and there's like space over here to sort of set it up in the grass or whatever. So thinking about that sort of a structure or placement, so... Let's see. Because there's not going to be anyone who, as their full-time job, can just, like, sell stuff at the market. So people who sort of make their own things at their house or who have surplus or whatever, or the merchants that come in uh, to bring the supplies from the main settlement would just kind of bring those down in here. Um, and this would probably be where they get their payment and stuff too. So let's say that there's going to be like a main table, which let's see, main table. This is where they would get their um, payment or the work they do for being in the village, etc. cetera. Um, let's see, letters slash news would probably come from there because this is basically the um, main settlement representative. So representative, which actually, and this is where this comes in, right? So if I go back to my regional map, where is that? Okay. So the post to... Do I even have it in here? Yeah. So it's a two-week trip up to the main post, actually. So this main table would probably only be set up... I'm not sure. I think if it's coming from the lower down village, I mean, it's probably still at least a week away. So let's say one to two times per month. So one to two times per month, this would be set up with the representative and they would bring the supplies and otherwise they would keep the supplies at the main house and then, or the main, um, yeah, the main house and then bring them out to set up. So this would probably also be a little bit of a social gathering. So people would have like food and drink to set up. I imagine people would just like, maybe carry out some of the tables from the main house. So tables from main house slash if someone wants to sell something, they bring one of their own tables. Um, people might actually just sell things out of carts from homes. So say you have like, it's going to be crappy drawings. Um, so say you have like, you know, a cart with supplies in it and, you know, we'll just stack some little boxes here or something. 
and you know you would back it up with the animals pull it through or something and have a few carts for right and then maybe the animals are all like on a post like over here um well i kind of suck at drawing top-down animals right so maybe they bring the carts with their animals um to sort of have some of it laid out and then maybe they have some like simple tables of things that they're selling you know let me think what else would make sense i don't imagine there would be seating that just doesn't seem super realistic um maybe there'll be like a little bit of a fire pit for when it gets colder because again this is a relatively cold region so like in the middle of summer this probably wouldn't be lit but fall spring this would probably be lit people could warm up at the fire as they're going by um yeah i think this is probably about all i need for this yeah so that's the market so that's checked off let me find my list so the next thing I needed to set up was the local, local leaders headquarters. Okay, so here's where I had this set up in the book. So I feel like I had this sort of figured out. Yes, yeah, so this would be set up in mid-market. Okay, so mid-market is sort of right here. Um, in between the, these um, lines here are rivers, which normally is not a kind of major placement for a city, right? They would need to be somewhere with a water source. So this is going to be sort of a pass-through town from kind of getting from this region down to this region and sort of having things travel um, down through the rivers. So this would probably be a sort of merchant city, a pass-through, so a lot of inns, stores, stuff like that. Um, but it wouldn't be overly populated, so sort of like a smaller town. Um, and they probably would have some, like, natural springs, maybe, to account for their water sources. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. So let's say this has... So then the next step is I'm going to look for sort of an inspiration for what this place would have looked like before the beast came. So again, it would have been a small um, market town. So let me go get some of my reference books. And this place also would have to be relatively well defensible, so it has to have some sort of fortress there. Um, so let me see what I can find. Number seven, which is this one. So this one was the most modern, apparently, but it is also pretty tiny. Um, it has some farm regions, which I don't feel like this one would have had much farm regions, but it would now. So this is actually maybe very reasonable for what the layout of the city would sort of look like. Um, but yeah, I'm going to kind of use this rough layout um, as inspiration and put this layout together. All right, so... I think I'm going to go with a different shape because a lot of the shapes in the book I was looking at are shaped that way because they were sort of built around um, rivers to an extent or how they cut away the river. So I don't want to just do like a square because that as isn't actually very defensible, although they wouldn't have needed to worry about that too much. But I'm either going to look for some like sort of curving sides or something a little bit more geometric. If I want it to be a little bit more modern, I think I want to lean towards it being more geometric than if it was a little bit older. Let's go with something a little bit weird because it would be fun. So let's do, I don't want it to be too big, but let's go with, <laughs> this sort of a shape, which is a little weird. But I think it sort of makes sense because the roads would probably be where people would be traversing um, the most because it's not going to be a very well-traveled area um, or easily traveled area. So surrounded by thick forests. So it would be hard to kind of bring a large enough forest to 
um, actually be a threat to this city um, or town unless they were coming via the roads, at least partially. So it makes sense that they would have the, um, let's do like this, the gates be the most defensible part. So there'll be these two gatehouses coming from either direction of the roads, which would lead directly into here. Let's, yeah, I think that maybe makes sense. And then there could be um, little towers Each of the corners, not necessarily always manned, but I think that would make sense. Just gonna draw on the walls because these would also be wooden walls. It would just kind of make the most sense. My uh, shapes aren't quite perfect, but this doesn't really have to be. This is not a super formal map. Just kind of go with that. Let's probably go out like this a little bit. But yeah, so we have wooden walls. We have four um, towers overlooking road slash entrance. And then two gatehouses. So then, okay, so we're going to have inns, taverns, markets, stuff like that. And I think it makes sense since this is going to be a pretty well-traversed um, city beforehand, right? So people were coming through a lot. You would expect there to be a pretty major road um, with all the big stuff here and then maybe some of the smaller buildings of people who live there full-time being further away. So we'll probably have a little bit of a... Hmm... We'll sort of say over here would be sort of a much smaller walled off area that would have been like the mayor or governor's house. So we'll just sort of have like maybe something smaller with, you know, their own stables and, and outbuildings of sorts here, but this would be like say governor's house or earl maybe and then the rest of this okay i am back oh my god it's a uh, very early in the morning right now for me but i wanted to get some uh, work in this morning so okay so i was working on mid-market all right, so they would probably have, the main road would probably be not, would probably be, yeah, a straight pass through if I had to, to think about it. So we'll add maybe a like, A small little like market square with maybe like a well where things could be set up. So these would all still be mostly um, like commercial buildings. So we'll keep them all standing separately.
books to sort of get some um, inspiration that I can combine for a castle. And this would be more of a separated castle. Um, wouldn't really have much of a village directly around it. Like there would be a nearby city with village around that. And then this is just sort of going to be a little bit more of a separated building um, based off my research. So I'm just going to flip through these real quick and kind of see what would make sense. This is a little bit more south. Um, so... this city having the well not the city sorry this like I mean it's similar to a monastery it wouldn't be called that here but it would have been a little bit more modern um, it has these massive stone bases it was built up to sort of be a little bit more self-contained and I'm having it be essentially for um, the elite class that wanted to go on pilgrimages uh, because there's a lot of areas around there for that. So there's a lot of like maybe elite kind of dormitories, houses for like what would have been like support staff and there's going to be maybe subconverted areas since, uh, you know, it wouldn't have been quite uh, needed to 100% full-time sustain a large full population. Like it would have been meant for people to come and stay for a little while and then leave. Whereas now it's being used as sort of like permanent residences. So I converted this area into having basically, basically more stables. Um, they probably already had some farm plots. And if they didn't, they would have created those retroactively. Um, and then I just sort of have some sort of buildings sketched out. Probably want to expand some of these buildings, the internals out, which will require more research. But... Um, I think this sort of works. I just kind of wanted an inspiration for layout. I'm not really going overly, like, copying uh, architectural styles or anything. It'll still be sort of similar, but I wanted something that had a little bit different feel um, because it's more south in the area and because it's also um, more modern. So, yeah. Okay, so I think that is all the setting world building that I need to do right now for Preptober. I am sure there are going to be little things that come up that I'm going to need to expand on and I have plenty of space in my sort of like story bible to add in more details, fill things out more. 
Um, I even have room that I could probably put some of my like mood inspiration pictures into here, which would probably be helpful. But I mostly just wanted to show you this to get an idea of my process. I think this really depends um, for how you're going to do, you know, setting world building based off how much detail you want to put into this, how much of a sort of, I guess, standard setting you're using or how unique it's going to be with your culture or your uh, magic system or history or whatnot. Um, just to sort of indicate how much effort needs to go into this because you don't want it to be where... Uh, your readers can't understand what they're reading about, like they can't picture it, they can't imagine it, and anything that's different from, you know, the day-to-day -day world are going to be things that people need to learn and understand, and you need to sort of portray them in ways that all make logical sense so that people aren't trying to figure out what's going on and like, well, why would it be like this if I heard this? Or I thought this world worked like this, so why on earth would this happen? Like, you don't want people to be getting stuck like that, trying to logically understand your world. You just want them to be immersed in it. And so I find that this is the way that, you know, going into it like this works for me to make sure I do that. You know, having these maps, having the layouts, having notes for anything that makes sense to me. Like, it almost makes it like a real place in my head that I can sort of think on and sort of imagine and incorporate everything and kind of keep everything consistent and logical and have it make sense. But this is a lot of fun. Um, it is what, what day is it? It's Monday night. It's the 24th. So we're getting into the last week of Preptober here. Um, I don't even know it's going to go on the rest of the week to be completely honest with you. It is crazy, but there will at least be one more video, I think, before Nano or like the start of Nano video, maybe we'll see. I'm not even sure, but let me know um, if you have any setting questions or thoughts on, you know, other tips that might be good for people. Put those down below. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time.